so what we're going to do now is look at differentiation. So here we're going to just look at the processes. So we're going to look at the chain rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. And what it'll be is just a few examples and just how you do them. The next video that will follow this will have a set of exam questions, which I suggest you try first, and then we'll work through those. So here is just sort of a quick summary of exactly how you go through the process for all three of the different types of differentiation you need for A2 maths. Hope it's useful. Hi guys, so in this series, we're gonna be looking at the different techniques for differentiation. So we're gonna be looking at the chain rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. So first, let's start off by looking at the chain rule. So what the chain rule is, is going to be able to differentiate what we call a composite function. So a function within a function. So let me take an example. Say I have y equals 7x cubed plus 4x squared all to the power of 8. What you're going to do is you're going to imagine that this function here is all x. So if it was all x, you would say, well, x to the power of 8 is 8 x to the 7. So you bring the 8 down, you consider this whole thing as if it was an x, and then you differentiate the bracket. So you'll get 21x squared plus 8x, and that's what you multiply it by. So you do the outer function and then the inner function. You may have learnt it by let u equals, then doing dy du, but essentially this is how you use the chain rule. And it's much easier to do in one step because when we move on, we then have to consider it in different steps. So let's do a few more examples and a bit more practice. So let's say we have x cubed plus 1 to the 4. Let's do three of them. y equals sine 7x. Now let's say y equals e to the 3x squared plus 5x. So maybe pause this, see if you remember how to do these, and then let's go through them. So here we go. We've got dy dx. We're going to bring the 4 down. So 4, pretend this whole thing is an x to the power of 3. And then we're going to differentiate the bracket. x cubed is 3x squared. So we're going to end up with 12x squared, x cubed plus 1 cubed. Now, for the trig function, remember that sine differentiates to cos, which differentiates to minus sine, which differentiates to minus cos, and we go back to sine. So if you imagine this was just sine x, well, that would just become cos x, but we've got the cos 7x. Now we're going to differentiate the 7x to give us 7. In general, when we have sine to the kx, where k is a constant, when you differentiate it, you just bring that k in front and you get k cos kx, and, the, and it works the same way with cos. Right, so now e to the x. We know when we differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x. So we pretend this whole thing is e to the x. So everything up here just stays the same. But then we've got to multiply it by the differential of the power. So 6x plus 5. And that's the chain rule. Right, what I suggest you do is go practice some of these, but essentially this is how it works. And you need to have the solid in your head to be able to do the next steps. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the product rule. So the product rule is when you've got two things, well, a product is multiplying, so two functions that are multiplied together. And this is the product rule. You're generally given the quotient rule, which is the next one we'll do, but you're not given the product rule in the exam. So you need to learn this. 
So the product rule states that if y equals uv, then dy dx is u dv dx plus v du dx. So let's see what that means in practice. It's much easier to see with an example. So with the chain rule, we did it all in our head. With the product rule, I really think writing out the bits makes it easier and you're less likely to make a mistake. So we've got x squared sine x. Now this is a product, it's two functions multiplied together. My first function is x squared, so I'm gonna make that u, and the second one is sine x. And now I'm gonna differentiate it. So du dx is 2x, dv dx, remember our little circle, sine differentiates to cos, which differentiates to minus sine, which differentiates to minus cos, which goes back to sine x. So differentiating it gives us cos x. And now we put it in the formula. So dy dx is simply, if you like, you kind of like cross multiply and add them up. So you get x squared cos x plus 2x sine x. Right, so let's take a few examples of those. Say we had um, y equals um, x cubed and then 3x minus 7 to the power of 4. Okay, so now my u could be the x cubed. My v is 3x minus 7 to the power of 4. This one, straightforward to differentiate. To differentiate this, we're using the chain rule. So the 4 comes down, 3x minus 7 to the power of 3, differentiate the bracket, which is 3, and then maybe put it together. So 4 times is 12, 3x minus 7 cubed. Now we put it all together in the formula. So we've got these two multiplied together. So 12x cubed, 3x minus 7 cubed. And then we're going to add it to 3x squared, 3x minus 7 to the 4. You generally don't have to simplify that, but you'll find a lot of your textbook questions do. So I'm going to show you how you go about doing that. So look at the numbers first. What goes into 3 and 12? That's going to be 3. Now let's look at the x's. We're going to say what goes into x cubed and x squared. So the smallest amount, so that's going to be x squared. Then we take the big bracket and we say, what's the smallest power? Well, that's 3x minus 7 to the power of 3. And then we say for the first one, what do we need to multiply by? So we're going to multiply to get 12, we need to multiply it by 4. We have an additional x. And then we're going to add one lot of 3x minus 7. So now our final answer will be 3x squared, 3x minus 7 cubed, 4 plus 7, 3 is 7x, um, minus 7. And that's how you would factorise the whole thing together. So, the quotient rule. So what's a quotient? A quotient means division or two things divided by each other. So if we've got y equals u over v, then dy dx is going to be v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. So you can think of it as like the bottom goes first. So the v goes first. And it's a minus instead of a plus, like it is for the product rule. So bottoms first, in this case. Okay, now you don't need to memorise this. It's in the formula book, but it gives it to you in G's and F's if you're doing at Excel. Um, and some of the other boards give it in sl slightly different notation. So in some ways, by the time you've done all the questions, it should be super easy to use. So let's take an example. Let's say y equals 
x squared over 3x minus 4. So I'm going to let my u equal x squared, my v equal 3x minus 4. So du dx is 2x, dv dx is just 3. And now I'm going to follow the formula. v du dx, so going the other way this time, minus u dv dx. So I've got 2x, 3x minus 4, minus x squared times 3, all over v squared. Now, don't automatically open out your denominator. There isn't a need to, unless you need to later because you're trying to simplify something. Now, if I open out those brackets, I get 6x squared minus 8x minus 3x squared all over 3x minus 4 squared. So this gives me 3x squared minus 8x over 3x minus 4 squared. If I wanted to make it look a bit prettier, I could take the x outside and I get 3x minus 4 squared and that would be my final dy dx. Let's look at one more example. So if we look at, let's say we have y equals cos x over e to the 2x. So u equals cos x, v equals e to the 2x. du dx, remember sine differentiates to cos, and cos differentiates to minus sine x. And dv dx, this is a chain rule question. The e bit stays the same and the 2 comes down. So now let's stick it in the formula. We've got these two multiplied by each other. So minus e to the 2x sine x minus these two together. 2 e to the 2x cos x over e to the 2x all squared. I've got my dy dx. What do I notice? And I can only cancel out because it's in everything. There's an e to the 2x in everything. I can get rid of that. That's going to live with minus sine x minus cos x over e to the 2x. And that would be my final answer for the quotient rule. What I suggest you do now is go have a look at some exam questions, but if, regardless of what board you're doing, the only two chapters that I ever get my students to do every single question and get as much practice off on them is differentiation and integration.